We're going to learn how to find the center and radius of a circle. What we're going to do first is put this equation in standard form, which by standard form I mean x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. The reason why we prefer this form is because when the equation is in this form, we know what, what the center is. The center is h comma k, and we know what the radius is. The radius is r. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to group the x's together, and we're going to group the y's together. We're going to put the constant on the other side, by either adding it or subtracting it to both sides. And we're going to complete the square for each group. So we group the x's together. That's x squared minus 4x. Leave a little spot here to complete the square. We group the y's together. That's y squared plus 2y. Leave something to complete the square. And we add the 4 to both sides. That's the constant. We're putting it on the other side, this guy. Okay, we're adding it to both sides. So we're going to complete the square for each group. So for the x group, well for both of them, we take the b, that's the number that's multiplied by x, or by y in this case. We divide it by 2 and we square it. Okay, and we add that to both sides. So in this case, negative 4 divided by 2, that's negative 2, and we square it, that's 4. We add that to both sides. Okay, we do the same thing with the 2. That's our b for the y's. We divide it by 2, 2 divided by 2 is 1. 1 squared is 1. We add that to both sides. So now we have a perfect square trinomial. We have two perfect square trinomials. One of them is this group. That factors into x minus 2 squared. If you don't remember how to factor this, it's just your b divided by 2 or it's the square root of this number. They should be the same. Okay, so for the this set of perfect square trinomial is going to factor into y plus 1 squared. Once again, it's our b divided by 2 that goes here, or the square root of this number. They should be the same number. By same number, I mean the b divided by 2 should be the same as the square root of the constant. The reason why that happens is because we forced that to happen. We did that by completing the square. So now on this side we have 4 plus 4 plus 1, that's 9. So now our equation is in this form, the form we like, it, we like to see, where our center is the opposite of this number, so meaning change the sign, so it's positive 2, comma, the opposite of the number that follows y. So that's negative 1. That's our center. And the radius is the square root of this number. So that's 3. Okay, it's the square root of 9, which is 3. So if we are going to graph this circle, we're going to put the center first at 2 comma negative 1. That's our center. From there, we are going to go in the rate in all four directions, the length of the radius. That's 3. 1, 2, 3. And 1, 2, 3. And 1, 2, 3. And 1, 2, 3. Oh, did I do that right? Yes. Okay, and now you 
just try to do a pretty circle. Mine is probably going to look like not that pretty. It's kind of like a football. But there it is. There's our circle. Now we're going to do a more complicated equation. One where the coefficients of the x squared and the y squared are not 1. That's these guys. They have to be the same in order for it to be a circle, so they are, okay, but they're not 1. They're each 9. So the first thing we're going to do, we're still going to do our grouping like we discussed before, so the 9x squared plus 54x, we group that together, and we group the 9y squared and the negative 36y together. And we're still going to put our constant on the other side. So that's negative 17. But what we're going to do is we're going to factor out the 9 out of these two guys, even if the 9 doesn't go into the 54. Now, most math books are kind enough where they put the number in such a way that it goes into both this guy and this guy. But even if it doesn't go into it, we still have to factor the 9 out. We can't have a 9 being multiplied or any number other than 1 being multiplied by our x squared and y squared. So we factor that out. It so happens that it also goes into the 54, as I discussed. But it doesn't have to. But we still have to factor it out. And we leave a little space here for what we're going to add, just like before. We're going to factor out this 9. It so happens that 9 also goes on to, into negative 36, but it doesn't have to, once again. Okay, and it equals negative 17. So the next part, the beginning of the next part is the same as before, but you'll see there's one step, very crucial step that's different in here than in the previous one. So we take our 6 and divide it by 2 and that gives us a 3. We square the 3 and add it here. So 3 squared is 9. Now don't be tempted to add 9 to both sides. Here's the part that we have to be really careful with because we really added 9 times 9 on this side. So we have to add 81 to this side, because we added 81 to the left side. Now let's try, see if you understand what, what we're doing when we complete the square for the y's. You take your negative 4, that's your b here, divided by 2, that's negative 2. You square negative 2. That's positive 4. We're going to add that here, but we're careful. We're not going to add 4 to the other side because we really added what, guys? To this side. I hope you said 36. So we're going to add 36 on the right side. I hope you understand this. This is the one part that's tricky for people. Okay, so now we factor this, that's x plus 3 squared. Once again, that's our b divided by 2, or our square root of this constant, which is 3. They should both be the same. That goes here. Okay, and then here, we leave that 9 on the outside, and we have y minus 2 squared equals negative 17 plus 81 plus 36, that's 100. The next step, this is also different. We did not need to do this in the other, in the previous problem. We have to bo divide both sides by this number that ends up over here. In this case, it's the 9. We divide, divide both sides by 9 because we don't want to have any number multiplied by these parentheses so that we have it in this form. So the equation now looks like 
in standard form, which is x plus 3 quantity squared plus y minus 2 quantity squared equals 100 over 9. So I hope you guys can tell now what the radius is and the center. So the center is the opposite of this number, the opposite of the number that follows x, so that's negative 3, comma, the opposite of the number that follows y, so that's positive 2, and the radius is the square root of this number. Okay, this is the radius squared. Okay, so we take the square root of that, which is 10 over 3. The way you take the square root of a fraction is you take the square root of the top and you take the square root of the bottom. So if we wanted to graph that, we go to negative 3 comma 2. That's our center. And we go 10 over 3. 10 over 3 is 3 and 1 third. So we go 3 and 1 third. 1, 2, 3 and a third is about here. 1, 2, 3 and a third is about here. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3 and a third. 1, 2, 3 and a third. Something like that. And you connect those points. And that is our circle.